Oh, good, because we're, we're getting the hurricane stuff today. We're supposed to get two inches of rain. So this is like perfect timing. <laughs> I can't be outside. So. I know. So, okay. So I saw the walk and trot. And any okay. questions before we look at the video? No, just what we talked about. I've been um, just... The, you know getting a decent trot out of her is what i that i can actually sit to would be great yeah and what i saw in the trot work was a big improvement over her kind of catapulting you out of the saddle mm. she's getting steadier but you can see she's still struggling with trot but at least yeah. she's not tensing everything going into extension and catapulting you out of the saddle like that looks much better yeah, what I've been doing, it, what I have found to be successful right now is very small circles or a very small figure eight. Excellent. You felt because, that. Because, yeah, she can't go into her habit if I keep a very small circle. I think you'll see on the video, because I was going to suggest more tight turns. Oh, goody. Setting her up for trot to really tighten the turn and then ask for trot. And you'll see in the video how the tighter the turn, the better she does with her hunger. Okay. That's where she starts to stabilize a little bit, but she needs the turn to, um, to kind of get her hind legs under her and, and really find her stability there. On a straight line, she doesn't quite get underneath herself as well. Okay. So I agree. Let, let me share the screen. And we will pull up the video. There we go. That should be full screen. Yeah, okay. it is. Okay, so this is the beginning of it. Do you want me to play it? Well, I'll start playing it and where I have comments or things to discuss, we'll pause it and go back and forth a little bit. Does that sound okay? Sounds good. Okay. So right off the bat, the first quality I see in her movement is that you're getting the coordination of the long and level, sort of the use of the spine. She struggles still a little bit with falling forward, but as you watch her right off the bat in your walk, there's a looseness to her movement. I noticed that when I watched the video, it's like, wow, I'm, okay. <laughs> so that looseness is the instability I talk about. <clears throat> so that's going to be a focal point of what we look at and work on. But what's happening with that looseness is she's just coordinated enough in the spine to let go of the excessive muscular tension. But she's in that in-between stage where she's not quite stable in the alignment or the rotation elements of her spinal function. So you get this sort of looseness through all four legs. Okay. You see that? Yeah, I see the wobble. It's like a wobble to me. Yeah, so think I'm of it as a dissipation of forward energy. Okay. That's the, that's what the instability does. So you're getting pretty good. Like there, you get really good coordination. Um, so if I look at her center line, her hind, her croup is a little bit high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's a tiny bit dropped in the back. And that's mostly to do with the rotation of the pelvis around the hip joint and getting more stable in her middle and her hindquarter. That's why we're seeing a little looseness in the limbs and the neck okay. is um, you really want to focus on stabilizing right where you're sitting. And the turns, I'll, I'll see if I can catch one, but the turns are where the hind end starts to get more stable. Okay, good. Okay, so in this posture here, she just barely wants to drop the pole, which you see when she moves, she's still got too much weight on the front legs, which again, could is not as much to do with the coordination of her skeleton. This posture is showing you've kind of got that. I think it has more to do with the instability within that posture. 
And that's been my struggle is how do I stabilize that? Because there's just so much movement going on. Right. So you, were you at Monday's meeting? Yes. Okay. So when I talk about the, the point of balance, which is the axis of a three-dimensional body. So yours is between the lumbar and the belly button over the pelvis. You can think of it like a tennis ball. Hers is between the four legs in her torso directly under the rider. So if, it, if you look just where I froze it right here at your alignment of your center, if you can kind of picture a tennis ball in your middle and picture a tennis ball in her middle, where are you? I look like I'm in front of it. Yes, yes, yeah. bingo. So what happens is, if we think of the point of balance is a center of rotation, like a hurricane, right? A right. hurricane has the eye. Just on the edge of the eye is what they call the wall. And the wall is where we experience the greatest amount of force. And the eye is where we experience zero force, right? So this point of balance is like finding the eye, which would be my lower hand, right? With my watch on it. Your center is just a tiny bit ahead. Okay. So what you're experiencing is a lot of catapulting forward. Yeah. Right? Because if she shifts hers back and you're not back there with it, then as she shifts it back, it creates a forward force against the rider. When she shifts it forward, it creates a backwards force against the rider and also a left right. So you want to think, and you're already, you're in the middle of the saddle, almost at the back. So it's just really kind of thinking mentally of connecting because hers is really not even where you could sit. That's what I was wondering. I don't think I can move the saddle there. <laughs> yeah, you're, so, you're already pretty far back in the saddle. I am but kind of maximize that. And even if you just mentally think of connecting it, right? Okay. Because if I were gonna put, uh, where's my tools? Um, there we go. If I were gonna put a little stamp, right? Here's your scent, oh, I need a different color, hang on. Uh, let me do white. Okay, so if, let me put this, oh, we still can't see it. Why is it coming up that color? Let me try a different color. Ah, okay. You can see the little heart. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So hers is kind of here. Yeah, I see right? that. So if I shift that just to, oops, it won't let me shift it that way. So the middle of her is here, right? And the middle of you is roughly here. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. So you're close but that's where you're struggling a little bit. And what comes out of it is a tiny bit of instability in your upper body. Okay. Okay. So let me play it again and I'll see if I can line those hearts up again. And to the right, you'll see it as she comes around this turn. Sorry, she's tracking to the right, but Correct. She she's pushing up on you a little mm -hmm. bit on the outside. You see that? Yeah, and that's a change for her because she used to be right side high. This has right. just happened within the last month. And it's because you've really gotten, for the most part, you're getting the coordination of the skeleton. These are just little things to clean up. Okay. But here on the turn, you can see how you're sloped in a little bit mm -hmm. and this leg is higher. Yeah. So what she's doing is she may shift that center. It's very far behind you and she's still shifting it left and right. The closer mm -hmm. they get to their balance, the less predictable where they put that, that middle. 
it starts to become a wild card. And I think she's putting it to the outside both directions, but we'll look at that. Okay. Great. Now, again, you see how you're being, you're tensing the back a little. You're getting yeah. pushed forward. Oh, I have too many now, hang on. Okay, so when she falls forward, her center, you can see, is kind of like pushed backwards, right? Yeah. And so, and you can see here, she's dropped the pole. She's yep. pulling a little bit towards long and low, but here's the force at work, lifting you, getting you to tense a tiny bit on your left leg, mm -hmm. pitching you forward to the right. Yes. You see that? So yep. in that moment, you would have to put a boatload of effort to sort of get back to here in the left back quadrant of the saddle. Because you can see right there, that's where the force is coming from. Yep. It's coming right up against your seat bones, kind of from the back left towards the right front. Okay, let me get rid of those. It works pretty well though for you to set up a static camera. Not bad. So here, this is really good. You see already, she's lifting you now on the right side. Yeah. So that may still be her stronger tendency but you need to watch both sides as especially um, on a change of direction or a tighter turn, because okay. that looseness that we're seeing in her limbs means that that point of balance is really in play left to right. It's not stable. Okay. Right. So connecting to it wherever it is and getting your center over it is how you stabilize the limbs. That's how you're gonna reduce that looseness or that dissipation of energy as she's moving. But there you see again, right? So she can even see right here where she's swinging the barrel way out. Yes. And you're tensing a little bit your right side. Yes. Yeah. Now, if we look at her, do you see on the tighter turn, you need to be back and now way over to the right. And mm -hmm. it, I think it's your jacket. I know you're not that arched in the lumbar, but there is yes. a sense of her throwing your middle forward. Yes. And it's more, it's not your seat. Your seat's at the back of the saddle. It's more your center. Okay. It, it's yeah. more kind of between the abs and the lumbar that needs to get back in contact with her. She's got a very strong force of pulling you down. Yes. And when she, I'm constantly fighting that. So when they pull us down, that's gravity and weight. But what's happening is the center of rotation is shifting the opposite way. Right. So if you can just let the reins go and with your body, come back to, okay. to the point of balance. That's where you're gonna create the stability in the back and the hindquarter. So it's the position of your body and you're fighting a ton of force even in your body. So when mm -hmm. she really falls, she's gonna start pulling on the reins and she's gonna start pulling on your upper body. You can play with that. You don't need to resist that straight away. The main purpose of the reins for her is if you watch the base of her neck, the lower cervical. So C5 is kind of what we can see at what we call the base of the neck. C6 is just at the beginning of the scapula and C7 is almost midway between the scapula. So there you can see how loose the lower neck is. Yes, that's what I feel. I feel this constant wobble. So you need a rain contact to where you can feel the bones at the base of the neck. But that's secondary to being more over. So you've got to shift okay. yourself back 
and constantly adjust the tennis ball in your middle left and right. And when you get there, what you're going to feel is more stable, less muscular energy in your body to stay stable. That's how you know you're over that center. It gets okay. really easy then to work with the reins because she's fussy with the reins. If you take too much contact, she drops the pole. So stay mostly with getting over the middle of the middle and getting that stable first. Okay. And as she gets more stable, the halt was good. As she gets more stable, you can add in because only through the reins can we stabilize the bones of the neck. Okay, that's that was a question because that's the I've, job of the reins. Okay. So here, let me back up just a second. So we can do a lot with our body using, you know, keeping ourselves vertical. So your verticality to gravity is really good. What's missing is that you're struggling at the wall of the eye, mm -hmm. right? So if you get more in the center of her motion, you'll start to, which is back and constantly shifting left to right. That's why constantly. we see the looseness in the limbs and the neck. Yeah. So when that gets easier for both of you, I think she'll be more accepting of a rain contact, right? Okay. So then you can really only through the reins can we stabilize the lower neck all the way back to that center of rotation, that point of balance, right? And here, as she, where was the halt? Because you did a halt here. Yeah. So here, as you ask for halt, there. You see in, uh, sorry, let me go back. I said there and didn't point out. Watch the inside hind leg. So there, okay. you see the outside hind leg doesn't get underneath her. This is the instability. If you watch her coming to the halt, only when you just about get to halt does the left hind pelvis begin to rotate forward. I and see that. First step of forward, there she's got it, got it, losing it, losing it. And the more you tighten the turn, the more she rotates that pelvis around the hip joint. Okay. So now when you turn right, I think this is where you turn right, you're gonna really see how much force she's shifting left to right. It becomes more exaggerated when she tracks right. Yeah, and she's yeah. always said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is the stronger pattern. It's still there. Yeah. So there at that speed, you start to get the engagement of the hind leg. And there on the turn, you get a little bit better engagement. You really want her to lift that pole. That's okay. telling you, like when she drops it, just a hair. See there, she didn't really go into extension. She just lifted. Right. And I think there was something around the six minute mark. I'm waiting, I might've passed it. So here, I think you tighten the turn, but if we watch, let me go back a smidge. As you tighten the turn, As you tighten the turn, watch your body because where she struggles with engaging the hind leg more and stabilizing on it, she pushes you out of the way. So watch the relationship <laughs> between the right hind leg and your body okay. there. Okay. Oh, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. Yeah. That's her old habit right there. Yes. Yeah. And so the tight turn works really well to get her really rotating the pelvis more, bringing the hind legs under her, which is where she's going to stabilize. Okay. But you're struggling a little bit with the forces of that coming through the saddle. Yes. So you have to correct it in the saddle to get the hind legs. But the tight turn really helps her. That's where, like you see, when she goes straighter, the hind legs get a little bit more behind her rather than underneath her. Well, we had been trying to get her in long and low for so long and, and slow. Now I'm finding long and low and slow is not working. Right. I have to, I have to really say, no, we need to move forward and get our pole up. 
Yes, and that the elevating the pole out of long and low is related to speed. Right. She can't quite, if you just resist with your core, it's hard because she's pushing you forward constantly. Mm -hmm. But if you think of the muscles of your core as the brake pads, you have to get, try to get farther back, get in harmony with her middle, constantly adjusting left and right. But then when you resist, if she doesn't lift the pole, you begin a turn. Okay. Okay. And then on the turn, it's going to get harder, not easier, but that's where she starts to kind of get it. And then right. if I go back here, you start the trot. And this is where everything we just discussed becomes exaggerated. Yes. <laughs> right? So there you can see how far ahead she's really throwing you. And you're doing a pretty good job not getting catapulted. Her balance, again, the first bit of trot is pretty good. Like that's all pretty good and a lot smoother than what she was doing. Yeah, Either. there's that falling thing that she's been doing. If yes. you go back, she's falling and pulling the reins out of my hands. So that's new. Her falling forward. Yeah. So here's where it starts to set up. Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay. Okay. And let me go back a hair farther. Here is pretty good. Yes. I that? like that picture. That's a good yeah. picture. And she's in a tiny bit of extension. A little bit. And this is the trick of the turn, right? So there she's lost the hind end stability. You can see mm -hmm. her right hip is higher. You're struggling a little bit. What's interesting is it seems to be a human instinct. When our body senses that, it bypasses our conscious awareness and we turn our head automatically. Mm -hmm. Every time you feel yourself turning your head past your pelvis, looking where you're going, that's what's happening down lower. Okay. So here's where you start to turn your head and then there you turn more. So here you can see the croup is high. Yep. Right? So she fell forward. The inside hind leg looks like it's going too far to the midline. Mm -hmm. The inside front leg is really bearing the brunt of it. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes. So she's falling forward from where she was pretty good. And there, okay, you can let her lengthen, but you have to get farther back. Just open okay. your hands, let the reins go, right? Because as she comes around the turn, let me see if I can do it this, yeah. So there, you see how much she's leaning on the inside shoulder? Yes. Yeah, so that's the shoulder going. And you're doing a pretty good job. You're stiffening your right side a mm -hmm. tiny bit and turning your head right. So your body is feeling that but you're not yeah. quite sure what to do about it, right? And so when her head goes that low, she's leaning to the inside. Okay. Right, and then as we go through this, there she regains a little bit of balance, but you see how far in to the midline her right front leg is? Yes. That should be going the totally opposite direction. Wow. When they're on a turn properly, if the high, and you can see the relationship back here mm -hmm. to the inside hind, her whole body is tilting. It's rotating. So, right, so your body is doing a pretty good job staying level, but your head tilting tells me, okay. if you straightened your head, you would feel more where you have to sit left to right. Okay, when you say straighten my head, just put my head between her ears? Yeah. And stay there. Because this disconnect between your neck turning and where your mm -hmm. pelvis is makes us less aware of what's going on in our lower body. Okay. Because we have huge clusters of proprioception in our inner ear and our eyeballs. Yes. Once we turn the head, we're not tapping into the proprioception of our muscles. Okay. Our head takes over. Right. So forcing yourself to keep your head looking between her ears, you would feel your whole right side. OK, you would feel more clearly where the problem is. OK, so that lean 
probably means you need to be farther back towards the left hind leg in that moment. If she were a canoe, you'd be tipping. Yeah. <laughs> right? So then, and you see the more she loses it, the more you turn your head. Yep. You see that? And, and that's what all humans do. So what you need to just alert yourself to is you're gonna turn your head instinctually and go, oh, I must not be level through my lumbar and pelvis. I must be losing her center. And when you notice you're turning your head, you bring your attention down lower. Okay. Yeah. And then if I, let me play this a little faster now. And you'll see again in the trot, getting ahead of her is the challenge. Like oh, staying crazy. all there. There you get back a little more and it works better. Yes. Yeah. And that's pretty good. But again, if we freeze frame this, as she's starting to get her balance, your middle is just ahead of her middle. Just a bit, yep. Just a little bit, right? And But her trot has improved. Everything you've done, getting her out of long and low has been done correctly because she's keeping the suppleness of her muscles, which means her back muscles, neck muscles are supple, but she's not fully stable in the skeleton, in the coordination of the skeleton. So that's where it's particularly important to go to the axis of the three-dimensional body and stabilize it there. Because you can work on all three dimensions at the same time there. Yeah, and the transitions were good. So I would say the moment before the trot, and I think here is where you start to tighten up the turns. And this is like there, that's a pretty good walk. And she looks much, much more tightened up. She doesn't look like her legs have so much play mm -hmm. after the trot. Now the looseness starts to come back in her. Yes. Yeah. There, and this is what you start to do. You tighten the turn, you're feeling it. Right there on the tight turn, she oh, that was good. the stability. You saw that? Yeah, I did. That was cool. And that's a super tight turn. It yeah. is. I'm riding a very small circle. Right, so if we look at the arc of that turn, right, that's a very tight turn, but you see that is the stability I'm talking about. And you're more with her center on that turn, your head is straighter, you're feeling it, right? Yes. So right there is where I would ask for trot. You're a tiny bit uh... on the inside, but just there when her balance is the best, right about there. Yes. Come through the high part of the turn before she, un like right there, you could ask for trot. Okay. You see that as you begin the turn, where she's placing the hind leg is what you're mm -hmm. looking for on a turn. Eventually that just will be the breaking mechanism of your body. But right now, all that play she has, all that looseness, the turn helps her get underneath herself. If you, and right there, you're totally mm -hmm. on top. Yeah, I look like I'm spot on there for a change. Spot on. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what you're looking for. Okay. Right. And then right there is where I would trot and maybe widen the turn. But when you stay in the walk, the turn does help stabilize all the way through. And then as you change direction, you have to make a pretty tight turn, right? I, oh, I think this yes. is the cool part. Now, right there, you see the right hind is high, the pelvis, yep. the hip is high, and look how far she's rolling you to the left. I could feel it. She just catapults me. Catapults you. Yes. Right? So that's where she threw you forward to the left and you mm -hmm. need to get back to the right. And then I think this is where she loses her hind leg significantly on the right. So you see on the turn, her right hind leg was so far back. And now I think, yeah, it comes forward, but everything's tilted left. Yes. So there she can't stabilize on it. Right. And I think then she pushes back every, if you look up at the top of you and her, you see how far. Yeah. Yeah. 
And this is where now she's putting the left hind leg at an angle. Angle under. under yep, I see it. But it's an angle. And the left front leg is going towards the midline. It landed yes. towards her center rather than reaching in the direction of travel. Yes. And then I think here is where she has a huge wobble, if this is the spot. Yeah, so you see everything is set up. Yeah, and you see now the left mm -hmm. hind isn't stabilizing. Okay. Yeah, and see the whole body. No, that wasn't it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a pretty significant fall to the inside, I think. I don't think that was the one I was thinking of, though. Oh, good. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> where you really lost steering. And so you saw on the less severe one, you saw her pattern. Yes. Now in real time, you can see at the trot the same pattern. Yeah. Yeah. But her trot left looked a little bit easier for her than her trot right. At Always. If you trot too long, she gets that looseness again. The very, like the first 10 strides of trot, back to the first five strides of walk, back to the first 10 strides of trot, five strides okay. of walk. That's where you start to get her more, here it is. That's where you start to get her more stable. Nope, okay. That's not it either, but you see the same pattern. Yes. Like, I can feel it. I just don't know what to do about it. Okay, so what you do about it is get in, find the eye of the hurricane. Okay. All of that looseness and all that force and all that chaos, there is a still point the size of maybe a tennis ball. Okay. Ah, this might be it. Yeah, she's falling right there. It either, but you see the same pattern over and over on the close part of that turn. Mm -hmm. So now the, there she looks really good. So just at the top of the turn, again, the turn keeps showing that's where she gets her stability. And if you keep your head straight and she keeps the base of her neck stable, the turn works really well for you. Yeah, but you can see she's struggling with the right hind going left, mm -hmm. which is why she's putting the left front into the midline. So instead of reaching there, that's pretty good. Again, at the top of your turn, it gets really good. That those little strides, much better. Okay. And before you get in the middle of the motion, the more you get in, uh, that was it. Nope, that wasn't it. Cause there's a place where you ask her to go straight. It might've been the one we looked at. And see when you only do a little bit of trot, little bit of walk, little bit of trot, little bit of walk and use the turns. It's like you have to pull all those elements together mm -hmm. to get her stable. Yes. Right, but if you do it from the middle, if you can just find, you see how much you're struggling with the edge. Ah, that was it. That's the one I want. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So here is just an exaggeration of what we watched every other time. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's so good. That's huge. <laughs> Yeah, this was so good. So here you see the looseness of the muscles coming in her shoulder. She had a little yes. shoulder adjustment there. So then here's the tilt on the left turn. The whole right side is coming up. Really watch her right hind and your seat. Kind of watch that relationship between how she literally loses that leg. There's your whole body going with yeah. it, right? Yeah. Now the right is high. So just there where she should be stabilizing on her leg, the foot is barely under her body. Okay. It's already behind her. That should be her peak vertical where it's more vertical under her, her hip. But everything again is leaning. So we're just kind of watching it shape up, right? So you got yourself back a little, but again, your head wants to turn, your shoulders want to tilt. But what's really going on is down here in your lumbar pelvis, being at the mercy of the edge, the eye wall. Okay. Okay. So here the hind leg is behind her. The left front is way deep underneath her body. That's how yep. she's coping, right? So then 
there she recovers. You see, when she put her left hind farther left, that's when she rebalanced. That width is what we need in all four legs. Yes, yes, see, yes, I agree. She regains her balance here with the hind quarter. So as you shift it a little and you're struggling to do it, you're kind of bending your rib cage a little, but you can yeah. feel you need to get to the right. She steps wide with her left hind. That's what recovers her balance. But look at where the left front is. Yeah, wow. So all the way around the turn, right? The left front was sort of taking the brunt of it because the right hind was not in the correct place. And all of that is directed from the center. Okay. Yeah. And there. <laughs> wonk, wonk. Yeah. Yeah. But you saw how far back. Like if you look at that stride, whoops, if you look at that stride, you can see there where the left front is about to land, right? You can watch, it's gonna go deep into the middle, right? And there, she's trying to move the left front forward to the left and she's mm -hmm. really base wide behind. That's what's kind of recovering her. But then that right hind, right? She got unstable because of where your body weight was. Okay. So she could have gone straight forward when she got wide behind, but then this leg didn't stay wide. Like it just didn't pick up. So this is what you're feeling. All of this is directed from the middle and you recover it quite well, but there is where her left front leg should be minimally on a left turn. Okay. Right, but you're stable here in the center. That's what's allowing her to move the limbs the correct direction you got yourself more vertical, more stable on her back. Okay. Yeah, but that big loss of balance was just an exaggeration of what she yeah. was doing all the time. Yes. And again, if she takes you with her, then you can't fix it. And so right. that's by really focusing, even if it's a moving target, we can move in harmony. I think that might be it. We, and, and that's where she was getting fatigued. That could be why yeah. she had that big misstep because where she was coping with it the rest of the video, she just couldn't cope with it there. Yeah, so I agree. I think that's the end of the video. Yeah, it is. You're on the outside. Yeah. Okay. So does that make, like, if you think of, she's tricky to ride because her middle moves around a lot. And it's actually bordering on the perimeter of the saddle, which is pretty unusual. Usually it's within kind of the perimeter of the saddle is where that center moves around. And you're as far back in the saddle with your seat as you can kind of possibly be. But where yeah. she's pushing you forward left and right is higher than your seat. It's mm -hmm. your middle. Okay. Yeah. And so to place your middle back, it, it's gonna feel really awkward. You're gonna feel way too far back. You're gonna feel huge shifts left and right in the saddle. Okay. But it, it's like, if we could drive our car along with the eye of the hurricane, we would never experience the force of the hurricane. Right. Right, so that's what it's like to put your tennis ball over that moving target, unstable center of her motion. And everything organizes around that. So that's what I see is that it's pretty difficult because it shifts a lot. It's very far back. And she yes. struggled with being on the forehand. That's why she was in extension for so long. And so you've got to get back there with it. And I had this big epiphany when I worked with Gavin from an osteopathic point of view, he always talked about getting the point of balance up and back. And what I realized, mm -hmm. and, and you can go farther with this, with your knowledge, but I think what he was describing was the mechanics of the skeleton. I think the skeleton, when they balance, shifts up and translates back, particularly the front end. But what we feel as riders is 180 degrees the opposite. Yeah. So if we talk about mechanics, what I'm realizing is the forces that are generated by the mechanics 
are 180 degrees opposite. Yes. And I went, oh my God, that's so fascinating. Yeah. I think I finally get that relationship of force management to biomechanics. So if we're just strictly following the biomechanics, that's why we get it wrong. Yeah, I think I might try, since you mentioned shorter versions of trot, that maybe I could even try sitting it at this point to say, well, what happens if I sit for four or five strides? Where does that put me? Yes. Okay. It'll be harder. It, I think it would help like sitting trot. It, you don't have to wait for their back to be strong enough. I use sitting trot on green horses all the time because the main issue, if their back isn't developed, the main issue is stability. And when we sit the trot, we can support the stability factor a whole lot better than in the rising trot. And I don't think she should hold the walk or the trot. Okay. So force management wise, you've got good coordination. You need to get to the center of the motion, which is still has a lot of play in it. It's, it's yeah. a really a moving target. It's an unpredictable hurricane, right? And you'll know when you're there. Okay. You'll know when you're there because your arms and legs and head and neck will find a place of ease. Okay. There's just less force coming into the middle of your body. So it works better. Right. So when you get there, spend as many rides as you need for you to be in harmony with that moving target. Okay because stability is her main issue. Yes. It, it's not trying to get the right coordination. And it's because her skeletal coordination is close. So she's let go of a ton of overuse of the muscle. Yes. And you're in that window where she's no longer using her muscles to stabilize, but she's not really stable in the moving coordination of her spine. That's when yeah. you find the center and just getting in harmony with it. What happens is every time she moves you, your movement introduces more forces into the mix. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you get a lot of static and a lot of chaos, even if you just harmonize with that moving center while it's unstable. Okay. Um, you quiet the movement because you become more neutral by being in harmony with the center of the motion. So you quit adding excessive forces into what's already a lot of chaotic forces. You take your body out of the equation and become more neutral, being vertical to gravity and in harmony with that moving target of a center. Once you plug into that, you're going to feel how she does, how she becomes unstable. The answer to her unique support is there. Okay. okay. Right. And so spend as many rides as you need finding it and staying over the top of it. The next step would be add in your rain contact so that you, even if she drops the pole, get a rain contact where you can clearly feel the lower neck bones and the relationship of that right back to the center between the moving scapula. Okay. okay, so we need the reins to stabilize the lower neck's relationship to the middle of the four legs. And even if they drop the pole, you're going to okay. find once you're in harmony with the center, you can change direction and speed a lot more effectively. Yes. And that's the heart of it. And that's it, it may not work at first. So first, take the time you need to make sure you have it. Try to line up the neck with it. Try to adjust the speed between your back or core and your calves. But I think with her, you're also going to need very straight and stable on a tight turn. And don't spend too long in the walk or the trot. Go okay. between walk and trot a lot. Like five strides walk, five strides trot, five strides walk, five strides trot your golden nugget of stability is just the very second of the upward and the downward transition. In that transitional moment, 
is where she has her best stability and balance. So really pay attention. And then once she stays in the walk, you start losing it and you're trying to manage too much chaos. Yeah. yeah. Once she stays in the trot, there's a certain point after three to five strides where it's not coming back. Exactly. <laughs> right. And you may be able to do like you may set up a visual marker to just ride a super tight figure eight. Yeah, my my ring, as you know, is pretty tiny. And the other thing, it's not level. Good. You know, I'm going downhill and uphill. Good. Um, all of that, when you focus on the middle and you stabilize on tight turns with uneven ground, that's going to help her stabilize. Okay. It's a little bit the black diamond slopes for the rider. But oh, all cool. of that put together is what she needs to take the coordination a little bit higher but really start to stabilize the muscles that support the new coordination. Because she's let go of all the excess sort of holding and st stabilizing with her outer muscles, but her inner muscles are not strong along the spine, in the back, the ones that support her, the use of her hindquarter creating stability. Those are not the strong muscles. I agree. And I see the same thing in people, they go from too much tension or being an extension to having nothing. And then you kind of have to recreate and build that inner. Inner stability. Inner stability for people too. Yes. Yeah. And that's all she's struggling with. Okay. And what happens is you've gotten a kind of a good arrangement. Like you've gotten the alignment stable enough, <clears throat> the rotation stable enough that she really doesn't even try to go back to extension in this ride. No, she's been out of, it's great. That's great not to have that, but just realizing, oh, well that creates, you know, the next set of challenges. Yes. <laughs> and that then it doesn't stop there. It's like, oh, we had too much tension. Now we don't have enough stability. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and that's why it's a balance. Right? There's nothing wrong with muscular tension. It just needs to be in the place that supports the best habit of the spine. I agree. I right? agree. And that's where she's struggling a bit. So by getting her alignment and rotation essentially stable, she went into long and low. You've played with the speed beautifully to get her out of long and low into long and level. She's not stable there, right? Yeah. So, and she drops the pole just a hair a lot, which yeah. tells you her weight's still too much on the forehand. If you can start to use not rain resistance two at a time, but if you can have much shorter reins and stabilize that lower neck between the scapula, she'll be able to push up more with her front legs. And you're really, by getting in harmony with the middle and using the turns and the transitions, the transitions are the exaggeration of the balance between the breaking and the pushing use of the back muscles. And you need that exaggerated moment, which is just going into the trot. And actually, I should say, walk, halt, two strides of walk, trot. And then maybe five strides of trot, then back five to walk. Five strides of trot, then five strides of walk, then halt. I think you need to mix okay. halt because I forgot about halt. And when you did that walk to halt, that helped a lot. That helps her a lot. Yeah. Her halts are getting better and better. Yeah. And you can play with it on a straight line. If you can't be stable left to right on a tight turn, then okay. play with the transitions on a straight line. And maybe I will, maybe I'll, I'll play with it um, using a fence line for my straight line. So I have a visual of what a straight line is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and if you use the fence line, it'll be, you'll need really rapid transitions, halt, okay. walk, trot, walk, halt on a straight line but you can really start to feel how to keep your body. The path of travel is just a visual to give us the awareness of how much they're shifting. Okay. 
And that's why I said, if you need to work with tight turns, which would be good for her, but hard for you, set up cones, make a chalk line, okay. cones. Do something where you have a visual sidewalk. It's not okay. wider than a sidewalk. And if you need to make a lane for your figure eight, make a lane because okay. that sidewalk, even if you're on a figure eight, feeling the horse drift out of the center of the sidewalk, a tiny bit right, a tiny bit left, that's the fulcrum of the body. So okay. if you need the turns to really help her balance, make it easy on yourself by creating a visual sidewalk for your turns, okay. especially because you're also dealing with uneven ground. All right, yeah. I'll figure that out, see what I can do. Yeah, and, and just even if you mark it out with sticks or something, it's just, you know, once you make a path, you have something to follow. Okay. And then you'll feel more, is the, the falling off the path left to right could be more the neck and shoulders, you need more rain could be the middle of her. It could initiate behind you and affect the middle. Okay. The middle is always involved, but then it sort of tells you, do I shift back and not be too picky on a loose rein? Or if I sit here, do I need to help the neck between the shoulders? Is that where she's losing her balance the most? That's you know? where I feel it the most. Yeah. And because she's still a little bit on the forehand, that alignment of the lower neck all the way back to the point of balance is critical. If they're in extension, you get a lot of play left to right. But if they're on the forehand, they're still shifting front leg to front yes. leg. So you still get that rocking motion and only long and level, light and stable. But you need to find the stability in the middle. That, that would be what I would say should be your main focus for the next month. Okay. Find that middle. And once you're in harmony with it, it's like two beautiful dancers. They move as one unit. And when okay. we get in the middle of the motion, we feel that connection, almost like if you put two magnets together, just before they touch, you can feel that magnetic force. Yeah. That's how connected we can be to the middle of the motion, to their point of balance. And when we get there, it's like, boom, we're not going anywhere. All right, I will play with that this month, just focusing. Do you think riding bareback would help me at all? It might help you feel it. Okay, it I might try that if I don't get catapulted off. <laughs> yeah, and you may go, oh my God, I can feel why she- Everything. <laughs> Because when you're bareback, you better find the middle or you're yeah. going to really struggle bareback. Yeah, I don't mind trying that. It's not too far to the ground on her, so I'm good. <laughs> but you may feel like you're sitting almost at the thoraco-lumbar junction. To I might. The middle. Yeah, and it might feel really bizarre. And it can be, it, it, it is a physical location. It is a physical feeling. That's how you know you're there. But we find it, it's like we can't grab humidity or the weather or gravity there, or even magnetic force. It's an intangible, it's not something you can grip onto. That's what their point of balance is. But it is as real as the temperature or humidity or gravity. Right. So it's physical, but it's not tangible. It is exactly tangible, it's subtle. Yeah, got it. Cool. That was fun. That is fun. <laughs> um, and let me, okay, let me stop the record. I think that's good.